Tonight, on Most Shocking, a lead-footed crackhead tears up the back roads. This guy's gonna kill somebody. But has a painful run-in with the law. Plus, a late-night pullover erupts in a hail of bullets. And a drug runner gets nabbed with four kilos of coke, sparking a wild takedown on the interstate. You better stay right there, man! Then, a routine traffic stop turns terrifying when a woman leaps off a bridge, taking a cop with her. Later, a car thief shrugs off 50,000 volts, but gets pounded to the pavement. Right here, right here. This is not a movie. Everything you're about to see is real. Brace yourself. This is most shocking. Stopped by the law. Dillon, South Carolina. A couple is pulled over for running a stop sign. The cop doesn't know it, but the woman driver and her male passenger are wanted in a narcotics case. Then, the officer spots what appears to be crack cocaine. The driver panics and bolts. The cop races to catch up with the high-flying duo. But as he falls in behind the sedan, he makes a horrifying discovery. The woman has actually abandoned the wheel. She's craning out the window, looking for a place to bail, while the man steers from the passenger seat. Down a dirt road, the car makes a sharp turn and skids to a stop. The woman gets away on foot. Her partner in crime speeds off down the road, still driving from the wrong side of the car. The officer rams him. But the suspect regains control. Suddenly, the man makes a fateful decision and jumps. It's a bad idea. He's pancaked by the patrol car. Amazingly, the suspect sustains only minor injuries. The crack-dealing couple could have surrendered peacefully. Instead, they risked their lives on a race with the law that could have been a dead end. Florence, Alabama. Police officer Keith Robinson pulls over a driver who allegedly just flashed a gun at a woman. Dispatch had received a call of a road rage incident. Apparently, a guy thought that he had been cut off. Without warning, the driver steps out, gun in hand. I saw the flash of his weapon. I heard the pop of the round, and I felt the burn after I got hit. As Officer Robinson steps out, a bullet tears through his leg. I'm coming up to come up on target to start returning fire, and um, I did so. It seemed like it was in slow motion. I remember counting my rounds and waiting for the threat to stop. You know, fire to the threat stops. You know, however many it takes. 24. I got one shot. I got one down. I'm also here. Despite the pain, 
Robinson keeps his gun trained on the suspect until backup arrives. I knew that he needed to be disarmed, but I knew that I was hit too. I didn't know how bad. What do you need me to do, buddy? I just, I discharged all of my magazines. Okay. I reloaded. Okay. My right cap is burning in the back. Okay. And I don't know if I need to move or not. I don't, I don't think I'm hit anywhere else. I can't tell. Okay. It turns out that the shooter, James Rochester, is a convicted murderer on probation. This time, he's convicted of attempted murder and given a 99-year sentence. Officer Robinson returns to the job knowing that he faced the ultimate challenge and survived. Dying never did cross my mind. I wasn't going to die. I wasn't going to let him beat me. Fair Play, South Carolina. Sergeant Dale Colgrove leaves the suspect in his cruiser while his canine Zeno does an exterior sniff of the man's truck. Fine. Show me. The dog is the best partner that I could ever have because he's so versatile and being able to track, apprehend, and do drug work. Today, Zeno hits a jackpot. The sergeant brings the dog back to the front seat of his car before going to search the truck. But as the suspect watches from the rear of the cruiser, he gets antsy. The man claims to be scared of Zeno, but Colgrove suspects it's something else. He was trying to keep me from getting inside the car by distracting me by any means. The sergeant is more determined than ever to find the truth. But the suspect has other ideas. When I opened the driver's side door, I noticed the subject was approaching me. And at that point in time, I'd made it in my mind that you know, there was definitely something going on. He couldn't be more right. The man makes a run for it. Colgrove and another officer quickly subdue him. Or so it seems. I actually um, deployed a taser, but a prong evidently was jarred loose somehow within the scuffle. The suspect frantically looks for a way out, darting onto the busy interstate. Zeno spots Colgrove in trouble and leaps into action. When I, when I stop a vehicle, I always leave my windows rolled down on the passenger side. And when the dog saw this going on, he immediately deployed out the window. Colgrove and Zeno pursue the suspect across the freeway. The canine takes him down. But the man continues to fight. I'm six foot, 230 pounds, and my canine partner is about 85 pounds. He was literally lifting us up off of the roadway. Three truck drivers actually came to our aid and helped subdue the suspect. Finally, the sergeant can search the truck uninterrupted. What he finds is astonishing. Four kilos of cocaine, worth over $300,000. It's an amazing bust. For Carl Grove's partner, Zeno, it will be one of the last. He's 13 years old. We'll be retiring him within probably the next couple weeks. But this dog is going out on top after he put a big time drug dealer on ice. Coming up. 
renegade robbers put the pedal to the metal. But tenacious cops put the brakes on their getaway. Plus, a belligerent drunk speeds away from a traffic stop, dragging a state trooper with him. And a narcotic suspect tries to bail out, but gets knocked off his feet. Most shot stopped by the law. Davis County, Utah. After robbing a dry cleaner, two armed outlaws lead police on a high speed chase. Sergeant Jed Jorgensen spots trouble when one of the bandits jumps into the back. The adrenaline was already running, gear started shifting, and I realized that, hey, they're armed. This guy in the back seat could easily just pop up and start, start putting some rounds through the back window at us. Officers decide to end the pursuit by laying down stop sticks. But the Desperados dodged the trap. We knew at that point that it was probably going to get kind of ugly from there. The madman rage head on into opposing lanes. I was thinking, man, you know, when do I make the decision to call this off or when do I keep going to try and end this? Jorgensen won't have to make that call. They decided they were going to take an alternate route, but they were going so fast that they didn't have much choice. They went through that stack of tires, up over that curb, and hit that tree at pretty high speed. Jorgensen follows, determined not to let the culprits get away. Just hit the gas, thinking I'll try to get all the momentum I could out of my car and then hopefully make it over the top. He clears the curb. and zeroes in on the Renegades. Stopping them in their tracks. The two men, Matthew Martinez and Pat Ferguson, are now serving time behind bars. All thanks to an officer who refused to give up. This was my first chase as a lead officer. You kind of take it personal. When a chase happens, it's like, this is my chase. You can't run from me. Sherburne County, Minnesota. State Trooper Andrew Thielen pulls over an SUV that's been veering all over the road. The driver, William Crawchuk, has a history of substance abuse and run-ins with the law. The trooper approaches and asks to see his license and registration. Meanwhile, a sheriff's deputy responds as backup. As the deputy takes a peek inside the car, Crawchuk becomes argumentative, and he's starting his engine. Trooper Thielen reaches inside the SUV, when suddenly... Crawchuk floors it, with the trooper still hanging on. It happens in a flash. Thielen reaches in to open the car door. The driver grabs his arm and guns it. He speeds off, accelerating to 60 miles an hour. The deputy races to catch up. Officers know the trooper can't hang on for long. 
Eastbound for 140 seconds. Suddenly, they spot the SUV rolling across a snow-covered field, with Trooper Thielen chasing it down on foot. So your suspect, please? Miraculously, the trooper is all right. We have an animal on the way. The driver is not so lucky. We have a suspect down. While clinging to the car door with one hand, Trooper Thielen grabbed his revolver with the other. It took a fatal shot to save the officer's life. It's later discovered that Crawchuk had a blood alcohol level three times the legal limit. It prompted an act so dangerous that instead of another jail term, so your suspect, he got a death sentence. Austin, Texas. A suspected drug dealer tries to outrun deputies in a neighborhood near a high school. Seneca Johnson is carrying a load of cocaine and angel dust. But Johnson can't shake the squad cars. His passenger decides to make an emergency exit. His buddy is gone, but Johnson still has the drugs and a high-risk getaway plan. He's going to bail out with the van in gear and still moving. Johnson gets ready to jump, but changes his mind. Rounding a turn, the dealer sees another chance. He breaks to five miles an hour, grabs his drug stash, and then... Johnson stumbles on the street and gets slammed by the squad car he was trying to escape. The impact shakes him right out of his shoes. His driverless van rolls toward an SUV, clips it, and crashes into a tree. Back on his feet, he tries to sprint away from officers, but is quickly caught. The drug dealer's desperate leap for freedom landed him right in the arms of the law. Up next, a routine stop for tinted windows leads to a spectacular takedown of a wanted killer. Get your hands up! Get your hands up! Plus... Hey, man! A drug suspect plays a dangerous game of bumper cars with police. And an officer tries to stop a woman from taking a fatal leap, but gets pulled over the edge. Straight ahead on Most Shocking, Stopped by the Law. Jackson, Georgia. Major Mike Overby stops a car for having heavily tinted windows. In the state of Georgia, your window tint has to be above 33%. You're always apprehensive when you have a vehicle traffic stop and you can't see in the vehicle. But dark windows become the least of his worries. The suspect drops the pedal and speeds onto the interstate. Major Overby cuts to the inside shoulder and rockets ahead. He catches up just in time to see the man weaving through traffic at triple digit speeds. The possibility of injury to an innocent person becomes greater the longer that the chase continues. So I knew we had the opportunity uh, we were going to use a pit maneuver to terminate the pursuit. Overby pulls in close. Another patrol car runs a traffic brake behind them. Then, 
When the coast is clear, the Major makes his move. It's a 120 mile an hour pit. The suspect is spun into the guardrail. His flight is finished. As Overby rushes to the car, get on the ground. Get out. He has a good idea of what he'll find. In the past, they when they leave the traffic stop before it's completed, it's because they're carrying some type of control substance in the car. But the reality is much worse. We found some gloves, we found a ski mask, and a, a loaded 9mm handgun. Unbeknownst to us, he was wanted for murder in Miami. Tinted windows prove to be this killer's undoing. Thanks to Major Overby, he's now facing life in the dark of a prison cell. Altoona, Iowa. Officer Mark Harmon has noticed a van with suspicious tags. It is a slow night, and so I decided to run some plates in a parking lot, and this one plate came back that didn't match the vehicle. As soon as Harmon triggers his lights, the woman behind the wheel pulls over. But not because she plans to cooperate. I open my door, about ready to get out. I see these reverse lights come on. The squad car is damaged by the hit, but still mobile. Harmon gives chase. Suddenly, the van stops again, leaving the officer scrambling to adjust. I had my hand down on the steering wheel to go into defensive driving mode because I was going to reverse it. There's not enough time. When it hit me the second time, it deployed my airbags. It uh, burned my arm and went right through my long sleeve shirt and burned into my skin, burned the shirt into my skin. But the collision also leaves the van crippled and the suspect shaken. Backup arrives and calls the woman out. My sergeant said, get down on the ground, put your hands behind your back, lady. But they're in for the biggest shock of the night. She or she goes, I'm no lady, I'm a man. It's actually a male in disguise. She had a wig on, she had a dress, and she had heels and everything on to get up. The man, Jeremy Asklund, is found to have a stash of drugs inside this stolen van. We asked him, you know, why are you dressed up as a female? And he said, well, I'm trying to hide myself from you guys, from law enforcement. His drag queen days are over. Askland is convicted of assault. He'll be swapping the dress in high heels for a prison jumpsuit. Wichita, Kansas. While on patrol, Deputy Robert Burkhead spots a woman standing on a bridge. But the agitated driver isn't having car trouble. I asked her if she was considering uh, hurting herself or throwing herself over the bridge, because that's the indication she was giving me. And she stated, yes, yes, I am. The deputy tries to break the tension, but the woman remains on edge. She turned to walk away from me like she was going to get back in her car and leave. I told her to come back with me. She turned and looked at me. I got that sick feeling in my stomach. Suddenly, the woman dashes for the railing and leaps. The deputy grabs hold of her dress and is dragged over the edge. Backup officer Doug Pryor watches in horror from his patrol car. I couldn't believe it was happening. I ran over to where they'd gone over, and I looked down, and Deputy Burkhead was hanging on by one arm. 
A bystander rushes in as Burkhead hangs on for dear life. He looked up at me and he was saying, help, help me, help. The two men pull the deputy back up onto the bridge. But the troubled woman has been swept away in the strong current. Officer Pryor then ran down the bridge, which was about 100 yards, and then back down to the river, which was about another 100 yards, jumped in the water with the, all, his, all of his equipment on. But there's a problem. Pryor can't swim. I more or less doggy paddled towards her. I got close enough I was able to grab her. And at that point, she did resist me in the water. And I told her, um, if you're going down river, I'm going with you. In an act of incredible heroism, the officer pulls her safely to shore. The woman's recklessness almost cost two officers their lives. Thanks to their selfless actions, everyone survives. I knew she would probably drown as strong as the current was. And, uh, she needed help. to come, police wrestle with a dangerous fugitive, but it takes maximum force to put him down, plus, How about one? an illegal alien goes toe to toe with a no-nonsense cop, and a car thief takes a female officer on the most dangerous ride of her life, on both shots. Stopped by the law. Austin, Texas. Officer Brenda Bermudez clocks a car going 18 miles an hour over the speed limit. Uh, what she doesn't know is that the driver, Armando Torres, is a dangerous felon hell-bent on staying out of jail. Bermudez approaches cautiously. All right, let me see the other hand. Torres claims he doesn't have an ID, leaving the officer extremely suspicious. You don't? No. She calls for backup. And, uh, 4 4 to 4 3 are you Torres tries to play it cool. Don't go, man. I'm sorry, man. I'm uh, a three limit or something. Yeah, you're going 48 in the sorry. I'm sorry, man. Then suddenly, Officer Bermudez recognizes the car. It was reported stolen earlier that night. I need 441 with a bang on vehicle. Uh, I need my 75. It's the vehicle that uh, was missing earlier. Torres overhears the call. It was missing earlier? What do you mean, Mr. Earlier? What do you mean, Mr. Earlier, man? As Torres reaches for the gear shift, the officer grabs his arm, triggering a desperate struggle. Ah, okay. Ah, like, ah, let go of your hands. Okay. I ain't doing that to you. I'm doing that to you. Okay, but no, you see your arm. I know. I know. You see your arm. I ain't doing it, man. Okay. Ah, ah. And then, just as backup arrives... Go! <laughs> It's a horrific scene. The officer's arm is pinned, and Torres guns it. Bermudez is dragged across the asphalt and then run over. Officer Christina Divin rushes to her fallen comrade. Torres is caught just a few blocks away. But Officer Bermudez remains on the pavement, her legs crushed. <laughs> Amazingly, she makes a full recovery and is back on the job just a few months later. Torres is charged with aggravated assault and sentenced to 10 years of hard time. Cedartown, Georgia. 
Officer John Bow spots a car making an illegal turn at an intersection. He catches up and tries to pull the vehicle over. But the driver seems oblivious to the flashing lights and siren behind him. He wheels into a subdivision, still ignoring the officer. Finally, he comes to a stop in his driveway. A passenger casually steps out with an armload of fast food. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Where are you going? Huh? So you just gonna get out of the car when I walk up? Uh, you just gonna get out of the car when I walk up? Officer Bo isn't having much luck with the passenger. Just, just, just go away. Just go away. So he turns his attention to the driver. This window row down? The window? Yeah. Oh. But Bo has trouble getting through to him as well. You got your driver's license with you and your insurance card and all that? Why? Let me see it. Uh, Jose Roche. Let me see your driver. Let me see your wallet. The man could have trouble speaking English, or he could have something to hide. Help out for me. Bo pats the man down for weapons or drugs. The driver offers no resistance. But when the officer tries to cuff him so he can search the car, the man fights back. The wiry suspect gives the burly cop all he can handle. Bo tries to wrestle him to the ground, but the driver breaks away and bolts. When the man tries to throw Bo off his feet, the cop grabs his collapsible baton. He manages a strike, but the suspect slips out of his grasp and his shirt. He gets away. But thanks to the shirt he left behind, a canine cop has all it needs to pick up the scent. How about one? It's suspected that both the driver and his passenger were in the country illegally. They could face deportation after this bruising encounter with American justice. Up next, thrill-seeking teenagers tear up the interstate, then get boxed to a stop. Big will break out, break out. Plus, the break in the night. an officer tries to make an arrest for DUI, but takes one on the chin. When most Chuck, stopped by the law, returns. Alice, Texas. Take him off, take him off. Officers try to stop a carload of teenagers suspected in a string of burglaries. Air and ground units converge. Trooper Russell Green joins the pursuit. We actually traveled through the city of Fremont. We traveled through that city probably at 70, 80 miles an hour. The SUV pulls onto a state highway and opens up the throttle. 100. Up ahead, troopers lay down spike strips. But the driver spots them and rolls the dice in a desperate gamble. He crosses the median and charges toward oncoming traffic. A cop on foot makes a last second move. Throwing spikes that just miss their target. Officers know they need to stop the crazed driver before someone dies. He was coming upon many cars, and all these vehicles had to take evasive action. 
Driver after driver endures a heart-pounding brush with death. Suddenly, the reckless teenager loses control, skidding onto the grass. The near wipeout scares him back to the right side of the road. Pursuing cops and unmarked units box the vehicle in. The team tries to break free and seals his fate. The chase came to an end with an unintentional pit maneuver. There was no intent to perform this pit maneuver on this gentleman, but that's just the way it happened when he tried to sneak between me and the other vehicle. The hoodlums have nowhere to run. In a bizarre twist, no stolen property is found. These teens weren't the burglars police were looking for. It's suspected that they put dozens of lives on the line simply to ditch some drugs. I'm amazed that nobody got hurt in this pursuit the way he was driving. Total disregard for everybody's safety, total disregard for his passengers, total disregard for our safety. Sugar Creek, Ohio. A deputy stops a pickup on suspicion of drunk driving. The driver performs a routine sobriety test. But when the deputy informs him that he failed, the man snaps. The officer is hit by a savage blow to the jaw. The cop keeps his feet and tries to regain control. The deranged suspect screams for the officer to shoot him. Ignoring the cop's order to surrender, the man makes a run for it. The suspect comes to a surprise stop and again tries to force the officer's hand. Incredibly, the deputy still tries to end this without anyone getting hurt. The truck turns onto a dirt road and picks up speed. The deputy backs off knowing there's a roadblock ahead. The driver, Roger Berg, is finally brought to a stop when he slams into a patrol car. He survives the powerful crash. Thanks to a deputy's restraint, he'll get a second chance at life after some serious time in jail. Coming up. There's a pen maneuver right there. It's continuing, though, still continuing. A pedal-pounding chase ends with a taser-zapping, bone-jarring takedown. They tackled him right here. That's next on Most Shocking, Stopped by the Law. Okay, there it is, possible stolen vehicle. Los Angeles, California. Into a gas station here. A suspected car thief leads police on a wild chase through the city. The cops stay on his tail, looking for an opportunity to take him out. They spot their chance. And here it comes. 
Oh, it's an unsuccessful pit maneuver. The driver shakes off the blow. Cross traffic here and maneuvering straight out into traffic. He's going into a residential area. Looks like he may be looking for a place to bail out. But when he rockets through a back alley, he heads straight into a trap. Looks as though they're setting up for a spike strip. Officers are in position with spikes. They hit their mark. The driver loses a hubcap and a tire. The front tire is now deflating. Police race in for another hit. There's a pit maneuver right there. It's a textbook pit. But not a knockout. It's continuing, though. Still continuing. He's got no place to go here. He's got to be stopped. However, he looks like he's going to go onto the sidewalk. That was amazing. Back into his alleyway. With his rim disintegrating, cops have the suspect on the ropes and move in for a final wallop. Okay, they really spun him out that time. A cruiser wedges the vehicle against a fence. Guns drawn, police order the driver out of the car. He revs the engine, desperate to break free. All right, we've got smoke coming out of the vehicle. An officer smashes the window with his baton. And another zaps him with a high-voltage taser shot. But this guy still won't go down. It takes an old-fashioned tackle and pile-up to end the chase. They tackled him right here. No one lets down their guard until the road warrior is safely in the back of a patrol car. He survived a spike strip and three fender-crunching pit maneuvers. But 50,000 volts and a body slam put this guy down for the count. Even the most routine traffic stop can turn deadly in the blink of an eye. Drunk drivers, desperate drug runners, armed felons, all pose a lethal threat when stopped by the law.